hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. And I hope you've subscribed as well or I'll be coming to pay you a visit. <laughs> When you're gonna do it, hey? We're not talking questions like what your usual people are asking, like Rob Tebbett or Coogan Cassis. We're talking real boxing questions. So when you're gonna come and do it, Eddie? You've got my email. I'm gonna send you my new phone number today. Give me a ring, Eddie. Don't you be a bottle job. Hello you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Pork here, the voice of hardcore boxing. I think we'll ring Terry Chapman the armour. How are you doing Terry? Hey, how are you doing mate? Still tracking. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying my best. How have you been keeping? Ah oh, mate, this lockdown, well, I think the lockdown's been over for about three weeks, so we're all just kind of in that, that really annoying space where we're not quite locked down, the things we want to be open aren't quite open yet so we've all this time and all this kind of freedom but nothing to do with it yeah i see what you mean mate i see what you mean what do you think about what's happening in boxing at the moment ah, mate, well, you know my views on this porky already man yeah boxing hasn't really given us anything you think russ we've kind of been locked down for about 10 weeks right yeah what's your highlight boxing wise in the last 10 weeks well i can't remember Nothing that springs to mind like a Ward Gatti or a Frotch Kessler. Well, would have could have been no fight. But even in terms of just things that have kept you interested, there's nothing, is there? No, there's nothing at all. If you mean YouTube and that, no, it's just re they put it's repeats and it's the same old people making the same old noise, playing the same old tricks, isn't it? Yeah. So, so, so now you've got to ask yourself: You're a boxing fan, right? You've given all your love, your money, your attention, your support to these guys, and they gave you nothing back when they had nothing but time. I can tell you this now, Russ. These yeah. guys haven't been training. There are a lot of guys walking around looking like Liam Cameron right now. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And so I'm like, what have you actually done? You've done nothing. And the laziness of boxing is what's going to ruin the sport. The money's not going to get good for a long time because, Russ, let's be honest, we've gone that long without boxing. We haven't really missed it. We haven't, I don't have we? This. You haven't missed it. It's like a hindrance at times, isn't it? Yeah, but but yeah, I mean, you got the you got the Fury cult still going crazy about their guy. You got the Joshua cult a bit confused now because they don't know whether they love him or they hate him. Mm. That's probably the only interesting drama that's happening right now. Eddie Hearns pulling his pants because his his prize horse is basically. <laughs> gone off script like the one in fucking Whitehall on, on over the weekend do you know what I mean it's all just gone crazy at the moment and no one knows what the future holds except for apparently Bob Allen who's just said I'm going to put on shows and he's the only guy in boxing who's shown any leadership right now yeah yeah that's true and I mean do you, do you think Eddie has just overdone it with videos per day I mean the guy's a machine isn't he yeah but what else is he going to do? <laughs> Eddie Hearn's a boxing promoter. He can't put on shows. So this is actually probably even worse. Mm -hmm. He just has time to talk about stuff when he's got nothing to talk about. And that's where we're at right now, isn't it? Him and Kuga are trying to do numbers and views. But the truth is, we now realize that a lot of what these guys were telling us about boxing is booming is nonsense, right? Because everyone's numbers have fallen off a cliff. Everyone's numbers, except for yours, Russ. Yeah, everyone's mine have numbers. gone up, haven't they? <laughs> yeah, yours have gone up. But look, everyone's numbers have gone down, right? There's been like a big boxing recession in the boxing media. So everyone's gone down by 90%. And they're trying to, I mean, they're trying to 
out the corners. But my benchmark is this. For camps like Logan Paul, remember in October, the video they did, Boxing Social of Bazinga did a video and it did a million views, 1.1 million views. He's just gone on IFL with Coogan. I don't even think that barely touched like 90, 90,000, even that. So, so where, like I keep saying, where have all these fans gone? Where have all these supporters of boxing gone? They weren't there to start with, were they? No, they never were, because those numbers will mysteriously come back again. As soon as the boxing comes back, those numbers will come back again, and we'll be told, well, boxing fans are back. But no one's doing the home workouts anymore, Russ. Everyone's bored of baking. We've already drunk all the alcohol we're ever going to drink. All we can do now is watch boxing content, and no one's watching it, because boxing's a tiny, it's a cottage industry, Russ. Yeah. Yeah, it is, mate, isn't it? Yeah, mate, look, even your mate trying to do a podcast or Carl Frotch, <laughs> I think he's realised it's not as easy as it looks, is it? You know, they're struggling, isn't it? Uh, I imagine the numbers are terrible, like when Hearn did a podcast, because you know this now, Russ, you've been doing it for long enough. Yeah. There's an art to doing this thing that we do. Yeah. You've got to find your lane, and once you find your lane, it's very hard to step out of it. Like, yeah. you just get really, really good at what you do. And you either cross over or you don't. Yeah. They're struggling, aren't they? I mean, there's no boxing going on. Uh, and all we're hearing about is dates. And even the trainers and the fighters, they're not even so sure themselves now, are they? Well, so what I'm hearing, Russ, like I've seen, I've seen a few lads. Most people are about... I think 20 to 25 percent over fight weight right now. Jeez. Yeah, yeah. Most people are heavy runs. Like they talk about, they've been doing all their runs, and they have been, but they haven't had the pressure of a fight, so they haven't been doing it like they normally do. So they haven't yeah. seen the same physiological responses. Yeah. Everyone's a bit sluggish. Yeah, I've had a few lads on pads as well. This guys are sluggish. If you were to look, remember, Hearn was talking about having 50 50 fights, and. No one is ready for a 50-50 fight, man. No. no one. Yeah. Look, they've had to delay the Congo clay fight because Luther Clay, he can't make 147 in time. I wonder what's gonna gonna happen with all these kids that are pulling out of boxing, Terry. Delivering your groceries, mate. Yeah, B and Q. Yeah. Well, what else are you gonna do? There's no money in boxing. If you're a small hall lad right now, who are you selling tickets to? Yeah. No one, are you? No. So you're out of the game, aren't you, if you're a small old journeyman? Uh, if you're a journeyman, you might still get some mileage as a B-side guy. You yeah. might have to do that for a bit. A lot of a lot of these small hall A-side guys might just have to be B-sides for a bit if they're in shape. i tell you this now, Russ. If you're a boxer and you're reasonably entertaining to watch and you are in shape right now, this might be the most money you make because promoters will be desperate to get you on. Yeah, I know, yeah. That, do you think Ern might have been saying to everybody he's got these dates to keep all his lads on the toes? <laughs> well, you'll know this better than me, Russ, because I know you look into these things. <laughs> he, he hasn't put a shovel in the ground at Matchroom HQ yet. I don't even think they've gone for planning permission. Well, there's no planning permission, but you need a permit to yeah. change the use of the property, right? So they haven't done that yet. That'll probably take a couple of weeks anyway before you even know if you can do it or not. So yeah. I'm, I'm starting to think that this herd fight camp thing isn't something that we're going to see anytime soon <laughs> because none of the lads are training for fights. Um, I know some fights are still being negotiated now. The paperwork being done. So if Hearn's going to announce the earliest he'd announce the fight is next week, right? Yeah. And then you still got to give the lad four to six weeks to train. So you're at the end of July already. Now people are going to go off on holiday, skeg nest, or wherever, wherever that's left and allowed to, to go to. You know, recommend the north, eastern coast of Scotland is quite nice as well. But, right, everyone's going to be kind of disengaged. You know, the pubs are going to open up. So all we're going to want to do is party and have a good time. The money for boxing ain't going to be there, or the time for boxing ain't going to be there. So, well, I don't see what the point is. I'd rather, if I was Frank Warren, or Eddie, I'd say, listen, first weekend of September, we're coming back. That's what I'd do. And then you build up 
that anticipation, but it gives you time to get it sorted. It gives, gives everyone time to get on weight, to get in shape, and then you just have an extravaganza on that first Saturday. Yeah. Like, from 4 o'clock till 11 o'clock, we just watch boxing. Yeah. Yeah, seven hours. Yeah, just 50 50 fights. Yeah. Would be nice, wouldn't it? That would be, be a dream come true, Porky. Yeah, yeah, it would, yeah. Uh, moving on then, uh, Joshua's leg, what do you make of it? So, I was having this conversation earlier, when you see a leg strapped up like that, they've done something serious, now, I don't think he's torn an ACL because he wouldn't have been stood up like that, yeah. but he's probably done his medials, so he's probably just been running, or he's been messing around or something, and he's twisted his knee hard, and because he's quite a heavy guy, and a strong guy, sometimes the forces are too much for your for your ligaments to hold. So I think he's just probably done his ligaments, which means he can't run particularly fast. He can't he can't do anything that requires being explosive. So it's going to set him back, I reckon, four to six weeks before he can even get into camp mode. Yeah. So I don't know if that's a, I don't know if he's going to come into camp heavy. Well, we don't know. But he's not fighting any time before October, really, is he, or November? Who's he going to fight, though, when he comes back after an injury? He's not going to be in Fury, is he? Nah, that's Pulev. Didn't we have this conversation saying they could, Joshua Fury could be 2022? Yeah. Uh, you fight Pulev this year, you're still going to do your WBO mandatory in 2021. This WBA mandatory will surely land in 2021 as well. And then you go, right. When are you going to get a voluntary? Then you're not really until 2022. But then there's also the question of does Joshua really want to give anyone a big fight until he's renegotiated his position? I don't know. Do you think he'll fight Fury this year then? No. God, no. No, no chance in hell. It'd be interesting to see if he don't because who has Joshua really beat now? Who, who, where, where's his top win from? Where's his elite win where there's no question marks over it? I don't think he has one, and this is the point, right? But 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 Porky, that wouldn't be out of keeping with most other heavyweights. So, what's Tyson's defining fight? It's Holyfield, right? Because. They're about the same age, they came up together, both been world champions, and people always wanted to know who wins Michael Evander. And that was, what, 10 years after he turned pro? Yeah. And then you look at Lennox Lewis. What's Lennox Lewis's first real defining fight? Holyfield, maybe? Yeah. How long was that after he turned pro? That's another 10 years. So yeah. this isn't unusual, us waiting eight to ten years for these guys to have their first defining fight as heavyweight. It's become a modern thing. It's disappointing. You know, look at Muhammad Ali. He wasn't that long into his pro career when he fought Sonny Liston. And fought him again. Less than four years, wasn't it, Liston? When it's 64. Yeah, yeah 64. 64 so, yeah. 65. So, so Joshua hasn't had the career that you would think he had from all the hype that's around him. And that's what worries me at the moment, is that we're not getting these fights. The Joshua Fury Wilder could have fought each other three or four times by now, made a bucket load of money. They haven't though, have they? No, because they genuinely think they can make one super fight, which would have been worth five or six other fights. And I don't think boxing works for that anymore. Every year more people stream the fights for us. Every year more people go to the pirate sites and do whatever it is they do. And so every year the money available in boxing starts to shrink. The broadcasters, you really think the zone want to put money up this year for boxing? No, I mean, what's going to happen to them now, the zone? I mean, they must be in bits. Well, so Sky had to suspend membership for a while. And so you're not paying the Sky subscriptions until the football's back. The same with BT. I think the zone will probably have something similar. So now all of a sudden, Russ, you're looking at this going, who wants to spend money when you haven't been making money this year? And I think the challenge for the zone now is we'd probably rather 
Canelo didn't fight this year, and then we can go to 2021 on a clean slate because they don't want to pay 36 million. So it does nothing for their business. And so Hearn, I think you'll see Hearn try and make some cut price fights, and he'll try and convince you that they're, they're the fights you've dreamt of. Like, you will, you'll just see washed up Kel Brook against someone like a Jesse Vargas. But that's really where we're headed. We're heading to those sorts of. Andre Burton type fight, fights you don't really care about. Well, it's uh, exciting times ahead. This is why we love this sport so much, Johnny. <laughs> Pork is going full company, man. I love it. Yeah, yeah. What about uh, Joshua's leg? If it's lies, right, would Eddie Earn bail him out with the lies? Could it be a ploy to throw a spanner in the works and have them both in on it? saying it's a legit injury there. Yeah. All right. Well, would Joshua be looking at vacating if he's out a year? And if he does vacate, who will benefit the most? Um, depending on the injury, the IBF will call it mandatory and they, will, they show no mercy. Like, when the IBF say a fight has to happen, you either fight or you vacate. If you remember, Hawkey, that's how Joshua got his belt, really. Do you think Joshua will get rid of IBF? Yeah, they, they forced Fury to either fight or vacate when he had the belt, and Fury chose to vacate. And that's how Joshua indirectly got that belt. So are we any closer to having one champion then? No, because the big winner in all of this will become Bob Allen. Because, and I know you, you're, you're the man for the stats. If Kula's mandatory, who's behind Kula? Yeah. The guy, whoever that is. Charlie Martin, I think. There you go. Now, who do you think wins that fight? I think Kula probably wins that fight. Yeah. Bob Arum gets that belt. Yeah, then he hands it to Fury. Yeah, nice easy unification there. And, and then, then Fury ends up with WBC, IBF, uh, and Ring Magazine. And Joshua's got another three belts. So it's three belts each then, isn't it? Then it, is, then it is definitely 50-50, isn't it? So we could be looking at 2022 if that's the scenario for that caper then. If that, like, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Fury just sacks it all off and goes, listen, I've done my contract, I've made my money, I'm out. That wouldn't surprise me either. What with Fury? Yeah. No, he, no, he, 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 no, he, he won't pack in. He can't help it. He loves attention like Eddie Hearn. I don't, I don't know about Joshua so much. But then again, I don't know. It's boxing, isn't it? But yeah, uh, we, love we, we love the sport. Will Eddie Hearn, if the four belts of Joshua's become vacant and he's out of action, will Eddie Hearn be slotting Dylan White, Usyk in for one, uh, and the re rest of his fighters, Parker and all them, will he be having his men in position? Until Joshua does come back. So you've got Usyk down that route, and then you've got, you got Dillian. Now, I, I just think they should focus Dillian on the WBO route. He'd have had a world title shot by now. Yeah. But, but they got greedy. They wanted the Wilder fight. Now now all of a sudden, you could, to get that WBC belt, you've got to fight Fury, which is an absolute nightmare scenario for Dillian. Like, if Jasora could have <laughs> get to Fury, I promise. 
promise you Damien can't get to Fury. Yeah. And I think, I think this is a better, more intelligent, more menacing version of Tyson Fury. Now, so when you look at the heavyweight landscape, I, I'll tell you who it does benefit though, Russ, if I'll be honest. It benefits the young guys. If the belt scatter again next year, the young guys will benefit because guys like Dubois are racing up the rankings now. So if you look at Dubois, Hergovic, I think he's really good. You know, people are sleeping on some of these other big guys. I like Tony Yoko. I wish he gets some momentum, but it looks like he's on maternity leave for now. But there are a few big guys, Joe Joyce as well, who will cause havoc because they have the potential to beat someone like Joshua. Yeah, so do you think basically that it could be Bob Arum and Frank Warner which, which, and, and Eddie in between them all? They're not really bothered about belts. They're not really bothered if they scatter. Do you think it's always been like that? Uh, so I think what, what happened was Heard was being so... He was being a dick about it, if we're being brutally honest. He was being a dick about managing all of these belts. And so what happened was promoters were just trying to get hold of one of them because remember Eddie, Eddie's argument is always Joshua's got the most belts, therefore he should get the most money. So now the promoters are just trying to get those belts. And sometimes it's better for you to, to wait it out till the belts become free. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. What do you think is going to happen to Dazone, Terry? What do you, where do you think they? What do you think's their role in all this now? Do you think they're going to be worried? Do you think Sky's worried? And do you think Eddie Earns played them all off each other and now they're all vulnerable and Eddie Earns come out of it very rich? So I think Sky will be okay because they're backed by a massive organisation, number one. Number two, boxing's a small part of their business. Like, let's be honest, like, they're, they're, a football, they're a football platform through and through and as long as they've got the football, they'll be okay. Do those more of a challenge? Because I think they're sitting on somewhere around 700 million quid worth of debt. And you've got to keep paying that debt off. Like, whether you make money or not is irrelevant. You've got debt payments to pay. So if you don't have any boxing for six months of the year, who knows how much you're paying? Maybe you're paying 35, 40 million just to pay down your debt. And you're not making that money back. So that's, a, that's a huge hit. And if Canelo fights, you've got to pay Canelo 30 something million just to box. Like you, the are in a position where they're looking for extra money from somewhere, be it an investor, be it through by, through going public. But they don't have a proposition because without boxing, the zone doesn't doesn't have anything. They haven't had a chance to bid for the NFL, for the NBA, for the hockey, for the baseball. They haven't had a chance to do that yet, right? And so, is there a risk that they're over before they've really begun? May maybe. And so, if you look at how Eddie Hearn's playing him now, he's non-committal. So, beginning of the year, there was a lot of talk about to zone this, to zone that, to zone this, to zone that. Now it's a bit less, and you're seeing him start to build bridges with Sky again, where he's talking a lot more about Sky. Because he doesn't know which way this is going to go. But if I was Sky, I'd be planning for a life without Hearn already. Yeah, it's... Uh... It's bad times for Dazone, isn't it? Will Joshua be the same fighter after his injury? You think he could be on the slide, Joshua? Now, you think we've seen best of him? I wouldn't would say on the slide, Russ, because he could box more intelligently. He could box with more experience, so he can add that to his game. But as a physical specimen, as, as an athlete, we've been waiting for that physical breakdown because you can't carry that much muscle mass and do the training he does and not have those injuries. It's not possible. Yeah, it's. Uh... It's going to be interesting, isn't it? Have, have Sky Sports and Matchroom took liberties with the fans and could Matchroom and Sky Sports actually 
miss out on the big big elite massive fights that this country could have had you know in the last year or so and probably in the next year do you think they've missed out by playing the waiting game Sky and Matchroom well so we've got to ask questions why didn't Joshua Wilder happen right? that's, that's, that's question number one why didn't Joshua Wilder happen well I don't know it's one, one of the teams didn't want the fight did they one of them we don't know which one though do we nah well we well, think we know which one we don't know which one so we can look at it from the PBC point of view Yeah. And so Sky could have put pressure on. I'm sure the zone could have put pressure on. But no one put pressure on Joshua to take that fight. And and like I said, Sky fell for the thing that said we can make twenty million pay per views of Joshua regardless of who we fight. So we don't have to fight Wilder since one of the last three fights in Joshua's career. And that twenty million uh, X amounts, half a billion just in pay per view, isn't it? Yeah, that, you can see, you know, those numbers become sexy, they become appealing, and they become a load of fun, and you're like, yeah, I'm all over this. But eventually, right, the reality kicks in that fans know when they're being taken for a ride. And this lockdown's been good because it's let people stop and rethink and go, why am I wasting my time watching these guys for? They don't love it. These boxers don't care about me. They care about themselves, so I'm going to care about myself. And that means I don't need to watch Joshua versus Pula. Quite frankly, I have a terrible fight. I don't want to watch Joshua versus Lucy. That doesn't mean anything to me. I'll watch Wilder versus Fury because I want to see Mark and the team. But if Fury wins that, now the heavyweight division dead again because Joshua will never, I repeat, Joshua will never fight Fury. You don't think Joshua ever fights Fury then? Where does all this leave? Uh... <laughs> you liked that one, didn't you? Right, first of all, I just want to say thank you very much for liking and subscribing means a lot to me because uh, we're on this journey together aren't we so anybody got any ideas for the channel fire them over to me porkycorner at mail.com all right shout out to innovation alloys and south yorkshire packaging all right don't forget to subscribe keep on trucking